In this episode, Tom and Andrew welcome Eclipse Chaser, Chap Percival. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another episode of The Night Sky, a podcast on the eclipses coming to Kerrville. Andrew Gay and Tom Fox back here for this episode, and we are thrilled to have Chap Percival with us today, the author of Go See the Eclipse. Let me bring him on. Chap, hello. How are you, sir? I am doing just great. Thank you very much. Yeah, you bet. We're happy to have you here. So why don't you kick us off by telling us a little bit about your background, professional background, and how you got into uh, astronomy in general? Career-wise, I have been a mostly a secondary high school teacher. Math and science is what I started out, although I've been involved in astronomy education since 1970. So yes, I'm old. But it's one of those things where there aren't that many high schools that offer an astronomy program. So I would teach physics, uh, math, earth science, that kind of thing. But the school where I was teaching ultimately offered astronomy. And so the last 20 years of my teaching career, I was, uh, in fact, teaching an astronomy class to high school students. But I've been involved in a lot of astronomy education outside of the classroom. I have a bachelor's degree in math and physics and a master's degree in planetarium education and was a planetarium director for a couple of years. Astronomy has been part of my interest. I can recall one of my earliest memories as a child was when I was, now I realize I was about six years old. My father was an amateur photographer, enjoyed photography, had his own darkroom and stuff, and there was a partial solar eclipse that was visible from our home and he took me outside and held up had me hold up some dark negatives to look through to see the sun and still remember seeing the crescent shaped sun there just marveling at how unusual and different that was didn't really get involved i just dabbled in things until i was started teaching actually and have been involved in interested in and mostly i enjoy looking at the sky no question about it but i get my greatest joy from showing people things that they have not seen before so and getting the reaction from them that is what really feeds me and and keeps me energized so i'm curious about how your passion for astronomy chap and your love for teaching eventually morphed into writing. How did that journey happen for you? That's a very good question. I was, my first, okay, my first total solar eclipse uh, that I saw was in 1970, and I traveled uh, to Virginia. I lived in Ohio at the time, traveled to Virginia to see it, and then I went to see one in 1972, And um, that one, we went to Canada, Quebec, and we were clouded out at the last second. Being a teacher and starting to raise a family, I didn't really have the resources. There were no other eclipses that I could drive to readily for 37 years. Uh, And so I went a long time uh, without seeing another eclipse. But one came up in 1998. And my daughter was graduating from high school at the time. And so uh, my wife and I were able to go see this one in 1998. It was in Aruba. It was a real hardship, but somebody had to do it. And so then we went to Europe to see one the next year in 1999. The next one that we saw was in 2006. And we saw that one in the from the Sahara Desert in Libya. I came back from that one and was uh, looking at my schedule. We had, uh, there was one in China that we planned to go see in 2009, but uh, for health reasons, we were unable to do that. So I was looking at the calendar of upcoming total solar eclipses and saw that in 2017, there was one that was going to travel across the United States from coast to coast. And I thought to myself, I said, somebody really ought to write a book to get people encouraged to go see this eclipse and i wanted it to be an educational thing and so i was just 
thinking that. I was praying about it, and I, the thought occurred to me, who else has the experience of traveling to see five eclipses, who's a lifelong educator, who has a real desire to promote and, and encourage people to go see a total solar eclipse, except me. And so in 2015, I wrote a book called Go See the Eclipse, and the subtitle was And Take a Kid With You, because I'm a teacher. And at that point, I realized if an adult hears about the eclipse and they want to go see it, it may be difficult, but odds are that they could do it if they wanted to. But if a a child, a kid wanted to go see the eclipse, heard about it and wanted to go, how are they going to get there if they have to travel? Somebody has to take them. So I wrote this book in 2015 for the 2017 eclipse. After the 2017 eclipse, I had retired from the classroom then, and I was thinking that I'm pretty much done with writing. I'm not, that was all, that was a lot of work. Writing a book is not for the faint of heart. And then a few years after that, I was in church and my pastor got involved. My pastor said effectively in his sermon, something to the effect that if you feel that the Lord has prepared you and you are gifted in such a way and you don't do this, essentially a shame on you kind of thing. And so I was guilted, <laughs> if you will, into writing another book that was very similar, but had a different vein. And so that's when I wrote this one. It's the same title, Go See the Eclipse, but the emphasis this time is the glimpse of God's glory. So it's a different take on it. And so I wrote another book, and there it is. Tom, over to you. Sure, Chap. We've talked to a lot of people who have experienced other eclipses and who are coming to Kerrville. Many of them who've experienced prior eclipses have talked about the spiritual nature of what they felt. You, however, are the first we've said, or first person we've talked to says, no, it's not spiritual. It's part of God's glory. And I really wanted to ask you, how do you feel that, or why do you feel rather, that the eclipse really is part of God's glory? It's a, I, I, I like to say it's a manifestation of God's glory. And here's what I mean. The, the There are certain things in the natural world that are amazing, awesome, that, and, and these and are very hard to describe uh, if you really tried to write them down. And I was thinking about things in the natural world. Uh, okay, I'm showing, uh, okay, for some reason it's pausing out. Uh, I've seen uh, Aurora Borealis, uh, the Northern Lights. They are amazing. It is such a cool thing to see. There are meteor showers, meteor storms. There are just lots of different kinds of things that you can experience. Some of them you can predict ahead of time. Some of them uh, are accidental. A total solar eclipse is different in my um, estimation because it is not just something that you see, but it is something that you experience. It is multi-dimensional. Uh, there's nothing else quite like it. You you start out, it's a three-hour event, and you can calculate to the day, to the minute, to the second, when these things are going to occur. And when they are happening, it's a very slow-paced event, but you ultimately end up with temperature going down, air calming, and you looking up at the sky at what is, it looks like that there is a small black hole in the sky surrounded by pearly white plumes that radiate in a pattern that's unique for every eclipse. And to me, that's, in fact, the term that we use for that, the plumes that surround it, we call it the corona. And that means that's Latin for crown. And the glory of the nature of the experience there speaks to me uh, tremendously of this was made. We're the only solar system that we know of, the only planet where this event can be seen. 
this is not something that's accidental, that, that there was some intentionality, that we are able to enjoy this experience. It's just an amazing thing and speaks to me of uh, the, the glory of God. I'd like to turn to the upcoming total eclipse in April for Kerrville. Chap, what plans do you have for participation in the event here in our community? I have, I live in Florida, but I've made five trips already out to the hill country to prepare people to locate places where it's safe to view an eclipse from. And it was, it's interesting. We, uh, my wife and I flew out a couple of years ago, stayed in uh, Fredericksburg. And then for a week, we explored the area around Fredericksburg and Kerrville trying to find a place uh, to view the eclipse, but even more so looking for a place where I could effectively lead a viewing session for people to help uh, them understand. Because my goals in this eclipse and every eclipse that I've gone to are threefold. I want as many people as possible to see the eclipse. I want them to see it safely, and I want to see them see it with understanding. With that in mind, we were driving around uh, on our way from Fredericksburg to Kerrville, and my wife said, well, I, I could go for a cup of coffee. Suppose there's any place around here where there's a cup of coffee. Now we're between Kerrville and Fredericksburg, and it's all rural area. And so we're looking around, my wife pulls up her phone and looks, and she says, Oh, look, here's a cafe. Maybe they have coffee. We put it in and we get there and we see this venue that we come across, uh, the marketplace at the Ridge. And we go in there and we walk around the area and we're just, my wife and I say, yeah, this is the place where we want. So we spoke to the manager. We met there. We are going to have on the day of the eclipse an eclipse viewing event because they host events there all the time. It's a regular, they're used to handling uh, substantial numbers of people. So that's where I'm going to be on the day of the eclipse. And we're going to, they have a, a stage with an outdoor amphitheater. Uh, they've got several fields that are available. Uh, the one issue for them will be parking, but they handle parking when, you know, 500 people come for the Easter uh, event that they have and, and different kinds of things. So they'll be handling the logistics and I'll be handling the astronomy end of things. I'll be able to use their uh, public address system to help people understand what's going on, what to look for, um, how to prepare best for it, uh, and this kind of thing. So that's where I'll be. We're excited to uh, have you here during that event chat. Look forward to possibly being able to meet you when you visit us here for that. I uh, wanted to, yes. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I, I'm planning on coming out a week before the eclipse just to be in the area and get it set up and stuff. So that's my next trip out there. We wish you the best of luck for sure. I just, I have one other question that I wanted to ask you today, and that is the, you're in the book, you describe this celestial event as a journey, not just the moment of the day of is brief but very overwhelmingly powerful event. But in the months and the days and the weeks and the moments leading up to this celestial event, so can you expand uh, on that concept of this being a journey for us all, not just the day of and the, and the brief moments of the actual event, but the the timeline leading up to it? Sure, exactly. Part of my wife and I have traveled to see six eclipses on four different continents, and so. The eclipse, while it may be the primary thing that we got out of each of those trips, it was part of an entire trip. And so each of those was memorable in its own way by location. In preparation for this trip, for instance, going out to the Texas Hill Country, my wife and I have just grown to love the area. The Texas Hill Country has got some wonderful country countryside. And so there are people who are going to be coming to the hill country who otherwise would probably never come 
Okay. You guys are expecting a bunch of people. So it's, it's, that's the part of it that it's, there is a physical journey and then there is the preparation aspect. There is some people will not really spend a lot of time getting prepared, but a lot of people will, a lot of people will spend time because they'll want to make sure for, for a lot of people, this is a once in a lifetime experience. Okay. Well, I've seen several eclipses. Most of the people who see this eclipse in April will never have seen an eclipse before. And so you, you have the aspect of, we've got to have some kind of preparation. It's a journey where you have to physically prepare. You have to know the kinds of things that you need to look for. You need to expect the unexpected in some respects, because when you take a trip, you never know when things are going to go awry and you have to do the best you can. But it's a journey of different pacing is one of the things that I like to talk about. The day of the eclipse, if you have gotten to the site, you had that part of the journey. But while you're standing there, sitting there, however you are ready for the eclipse, the journey of the sun and the moon in the sky become the focal point. And so things for about a three hour period, you have the moon approaching the sun and appearing to touch the sun and gradually covering more and more. And that takes an hour, a little bit more than an hour. And it starts out, it's very slow paced and, and you wouldn't know what's going on in the sky if you looked that route because it doesn't get dark right away. It takes a while. And so you have the journey, the gradual character, the things that start to change gradually, the temperature starts to go down after about 45 minutes, the color of the sky changes. When we were out in Kerrville for the annular eclipse in October, hope you guys got to see that one. We noticed particularly the change in the color of the sky. Sky blue was not the same sky blue during the annular eclipse. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that the circle of the sun that we see is not the same color. It's not the same color all the way across. That the center of the sun is actually brighter than the edges. And so the color is different. And that makes the color of the sky different. It's still a blue, but it's not the same kind of blue. Shadows start to change. There's There it becomes, and it starts to speed up. More things are happening. You want to pay close attention. And, and you, there's a certain climax that you feel is coming. And when the sun finally covers the last piece of, the moon covers of the last piece of the sun's disk, you have a piece of sunlight that shines through a valley on the moon and it produces a flash of light that is called the diamond ring. And that's on the cover of my book. And the diamond ring is just an exquisite thing, but it's temporary. It only lasts for a few seconds. And then you have, and, and I wish would say that during this time, it's a transition. And people, if you're with a crowd, people will be, cheering they'll be shouting they'll be clapping they'll be whistling they'll be an amazing during this period of transition but once the sun is completely covered and all is that corona in the sky it becomes quiet people's jaw drop they don't know what to say they whisper it was it is so different i can really understand how in cultures that don't know what's going on, that they would be terrified at what's going on because it's a scene like no other. And so this whole journey and preparation for this is, if you've made preparations for other journeys, that's great. But the end result is you're going to get there and you're going to see something. Every eclipse that I see, there's something new that I learned. There's something that I didn't see before. There are so many aspects and so many things going on. 
And then you have, what, four minutes, a little over four minutes. And yes, I've traveled thousands of miles for four minutes of totality. Mm-hmm. It's it's well worth it. And it's there are people who have gone to see many more than I have. Six is not that big a number for some people. Still, it's such an I can't get enough. I have at last total somewhere around 50 people, former students, friends, family members, who are going to be with me there at the Ridge to view the eclipse, in addition to all the local people who will be there. And so it's I have harassed my friends enough to encourage them to go take the time to go see this eclipse. And that's part of that special journey. Well, you sure, Chap, as we move towards the end of this episode, I wanted to ask if our listeners wanted any more information on yourself, your experiences around eclipses, of course, your book, and most importantly, the your time during the eclipse at the Ridge, what might be the best place or places for them to go? So view the eclipse? Uh, the, no, the your site, the information okay. on what you're doing at the Ridge, your book, those sorts of things. Okay. The eclipse itself, the partial phases and the total phase is roughly in Kerrville from noon until three. Okay. A little variability, but that, and with the main totality being around 130, 135. I would recommend, because we just don't know how many people will be in Kerrville, what the logistics situation is going to be. The restaurant is normally the cafe is normally closed on monday but that day they will be open you can get there park and bring a chair or two i would recommend so you can sit out on the grass or the lawn if you don't want to stand for three hours or more and i will have a telescope set up and the image i had an image uh, in the october eclipse we tested it out uh, projected uh, cast to a, a tv So we will have some uh, sort of thing like that. You want to make sure that you have uh, eclipse glasses for safely viewing the partial eclipse or for looking at the sun anytime other than totality. Yeah, safety is a big concern. You do not want, I would not recommend this for very young children who, uh, for young children who cannot obey uh, and, and understand you don't want little children you know staring at the sun that's not a good idea you want to make sure that you have eclipse shades uh, there will be some available uh, at the ridge at uh, the marketplace uh, I'll be I'll have some uh, available I'm sure Kerrville has been making there have been lots of them that have been ordered and processed and, and other stuff the big thing would be getting there early enough to find a parking spot and to um, find your way up to uh, the viewing area, which is where the behind the store to the side of the store, there's a field um, in this uh, amphitheater area that I mentioned. And I'll be there. I will get there very early in the morning because I am actually camping on the property the night before. So I'll, I'll be there very early. And well, let's try that. Again. Where on the internet can people go? find your site, your book, and more information about your event at the Ridge. Yeah, you can go to go see the eclipse.net. That's my website. And I have information about all of that stuff there. And people are welcome to go there. I have links to merchandise that the eclipse stuff they can take a look at and see if they're interested in. I do recommend that they get, I think the book makes a good read. There's lots of good information in the book. And so that's it. Go see the eclipse.net. Wonderful. Chap, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing. We we look forward to, to seeing you here in our community for the upcoming eclipse in April. Thank you very much. I appreciate your having me. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you so much for listening to the award-winning The Night Sky. If you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review wherever great podcasts are listened to. The Night Sky, a podcast on the eclipses coming to Kerrville, is a production of the Texas Hill Country Podcast Network.